hello and welcome to another trip report this time not on a really long distance train not on an international train it's still an intercity though but it's a really scenic route it's a train from Dinant in Belgium in the Ardennes to Namur the Namen which is the capital of Wallonia um, this route is really pretty the Ardennes are really pretty in general um, I went with my girlfriend to the town of Dinant I was like okay just see if I make a video. I don't know if I will edit this or not. Anyway, um, in this video, I first show the station, then I show you the train. These are the Siemens Dicero trains. I already did a review of them, um, of the Belgian railway company. I did more Siemens Dicero trains, by the way, in my videos. And after that, uh, I will show you some views from the train. And this is the most stunning part. And of course, I also show you a little bit of the town of D9 in this video. I hope you like this video. When you do so, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And when you like to see more videos like this, trip reports, subscribe to my channel. For now, let's roll the intro. Before I start this video, a quick comparison on the route Dinant, Namur or Namen by train or car. As you can see, the train is way more environmental friendly. Dinant is not a very big town, but it's very well known. And when you see this scenery, it's not a surprise that it's very well known. Obviously, it's also very touristy. It's located right next to the River Maas, and along the River Maas you find a big boulevard with lots of restaurants. When you go a little bit more to the back streets of this town, you find more shops and, well, the more quiet streets of this town. So it feels less touristy, although it's still very touristy. But obviously, the touristy places are also the pretty places. You find a citadel on the mountains, and right next to the citadel entrance, you find this church. Because there was quite a big line at the entrance of the citadel, we didn't went to the citadel, but we visited the church instead. There are lots of fun activities near Dina, but for now, let's move to the train station. Because when you watch this video on this channel, you probably won't expect a city guide of Dina. The train station is not very big. At the front of the station you find a taxi stand, some bus stops, and when you enter the train station you find a vending machine right before the entrance. Within the railway station you will find some places where you can wait, some vending machines for snacks and drinks, and believe it or not, you even find a ticket counter that was closed at the moment I recorded this. At these screens you find information about construction works, departure times, etc. And I guess this is it. Something that's really improving in Belgium railway stations over the past years is the accessibility for people traveling in a wheelchair for example. We are not there yet, so there's still a long way to go, but there are some improvements and I really like this. In my opinion, traveling should be easy to everybody, whether you're in a wheelchair or not. Although there is a vending machine and there is some ticket counter, we bought our tickets online. This is way easier when you ask me. For buses, you'll find a dedicated ticket counter at the front of the railway station. Speaking of which, on the way to Dinan from Namur, or Namen as the Dutch name is, there were some construction works while there were no trains in the morning. So we arrived here by a train replacement bus. Although the views from the bus were also pretty stunning, the views from the train were actually way nicer. By the way, the railway station is pretty close to the town center and also to the scenic point. At the moment I recorded this, there were some construction works at the platforms as well. But the platforms in general are not that special. You find some places where you can wait, some garbage cans and well, some places where you can hide from the rain. That's basically it. So time to explore the train a bit. The train types that are being used for these routes, at least the train we had, were the Dicero trains made by Siemens. On the outside of the train, on the extra yellow line, you can recognize exactly where the first class is located. And at the front and at the side of the train, you will find digital screens that go give route information. Although when it's really sunny, they don't work really well with my camera. Bike and wheelchair icons do indicate where you can enter the train when you're traveling with a bike or a wheelchair. Time to show the interior of these trains. I already did a trip report on exactly the same train type that was on the route from Luxembourg to Liège, or Luik as the Dutch name is, that was an international connection. For shorter distances, I think these trains are perfect. They are easy accessible for people traveling with a bike or a wheelchair, or a buggy for babies. 
they do have a good capacity, they are light, so that's fine. But for long distances, I don't know. I don't like these trains for longer intercity distances. The biggest part of the second class comes in an open compartment, as you just saw in a 2x2 configuration, and near the toilet you'll find some extra places for wheelchairs and bikes. Route information, very basic though, will be given at LED screens just below the entrance doors and at the end of all compartments you'll find screens with more detailed route information. You won't find a lot of power plugs, but you'll find power plugs just below the luggage racks. You also find coat hangers and all windows do have sunscreens. Within these train sets you will find one toilet. These toilets are pretty big and also easy accessible of course. The second class will give you a very reasonable amount of leg space, especially for a commuter train. At the very front and the very back of the train you'll find the first class. The first class will give you a tiny bit more leg space and you'll find these very small tray tables. The seats are a little bit more comfortable, but I don't find the first class that much more interesting than the second class on these routes. The train we'll be taking today will go over Belgian railway line 154. This railway line runs between Namur and the French border, from where there's a railway connection on the French railway line 205000, also known as the railway line soissons Givet. Although my French is not that good, so I probably pronounced this wrong, but we'll find out soon in the comments. Unfortunately, there are no trains anymore on the most southern part of this railway line. Near the town of Neff, you'll find a connection to railway line 150 and railway line 166, what means that some local trains will continue their way on one of these railway lines. I just think it's a pity there are no trains anymore running to the French border station of Gif. Although there is a bus connection on this part of the route, it's not a train, and this doesn't show up in the international timetable, so therefore People might think it's pretty difficult to do this by public transport. By the way, when you want to support this channel, I do have a Patreon account as well. You can go to patreon.com slash trainviking to find out more. But of course, a like, subscription or a comment on one of my videos is also very much appreciated to help the channel grow. For the next tiny bit of this video, I will show you some views on the route between Dina and Nantua. We are here at the railway station of Nam and Namur. Um, I will feature this railway station in another video that will be on the train from here to Maubez in France. And from Maubez you have a really good connection on the local train to Paris. So this is actually a really good alternative when you want to go to Paris from this part of Belgium instead of taking the high speed line that will go from Brussels south. Anyway, I hope you like this video. When you do so, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And when you made it up to this point in this video, you might consider subscribing to my channel. See you on my next video. By the way, when you're interested in other trip reports I did, of course you can find them on my YouTube channel, but below the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map, and on this map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes of these trains, and the stations or ferry icons do indicate the station or ferry terminal reviews.